Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar, it is the Saturday Report with Hope Sebastian Taylor. Thank you and welcome once again, my friends, to the Saturday Report with me, Hope Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur conflict resolution uh, facilitator. And welcome to AWSM Radio, an independent digital-only radio station that plays today's best music, Old school classics, along with a rotating cast of all-star DJs. AWSM Radio focuses on mainstream artists, independent artists, along with a variety of interesting talk and music shows throughout the day. All we do is entertain, inspire, and inform. And my friends, I want to engage with you. I want you to be part of the conversation. So find me on the Twitter, at Colt S. Taylor. And you can also find me on the Cameo, at Colt S. Taylor. And of course, of course... If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast version of this show at uh, anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. And as a dad bonus, most of the time I am recording this show on twitch.tv slash Colt S. Taylor unless, uh, you know, my time constraints don't allow me. But anyways, all right, friends, let's get started with this week's side report. First up this week, we go to... Electricity. No, I'm not taking you down to Electric Avenue. I'm talking about extension cords. Why, you ask? What sort of story is going on that extension cords is the first story of this broadcast this weekend? What is going on, cult? You've lost your mind. Well, maybe, but so are the people buying a very specific kind of extension cord on Amazon. Now, you know the typical extension cord. You've got the plug end, the prongs, and then, you know, the, the other end that you plug gets plugged into. The one with the prongs is called the male end, and the other end is called the female end, because obviously, you know, anatomy, you can fill in, fill in the pictures there. Uh, or you can go to any number of websites to, you know, help you sort that out. Well, on Amazon... Um, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued a warning telling people that they need to stop buying certain kinds of extension cords on Amazon. What's that, Colt? Is there some sort of defective extension cord out there? Do I have one of them? How would I know? Well, this is actually a very easy thing to check in your shed or basement. Um, they're extension cords with a male-to-male end, so prongs on both ends. Yes, prongs on both ends. Well, gosh, why would you, why would you have that? Well, people are under the, um, mistaken, um, uh, mistaken belief that if there's a power outage and they have a generator, then they can plug, uh, one end into the generator and the other end into any sort of outlet they have in their house and then electricity will flow throughout their house. Yes, yes, let me just, let me just bring that down here. Power outage, ooh, generator. Plug this in here and then I will plug this into, you know, the outlet next to the TV that should give power. Nope, not how that works. According to the uh, uh, statement from the uh, the consumer safe the consumer product safety commission, quote, the extension cords have two male ends, a three prong plug, and are generally used to quote back feed electricity into a residence during a power outage by connecting a generator to an outlet in a home. When plugged into a generator or outlet, the opposite end has live electricity, posing a serious risk of shock or electrocution. Additionally, the flow of electricity, the flow of electric power in the direction reverse to that of a typical flow of power circumvents safety features of a home's electrical system and can result in a fire. The short length of some of these cords also encourages the use of a generator near the home, which could create a carbon monoxide poisoning. Furthermore, these cords should not comply with applicable national safety codes, such as the fire, the National Fire Protection Association 70 and FPA 70. So basically, uh, these cords do not follow any standards, uh, encourage people to bring their generators inside the house, which could cause a 
uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, and your house is not designed to get electricity that way, and it could cause a fire. And Amazon are s selling these on Amazon. So, uh, these quote-unquote suicide cords should be not pr purchased in any way whatsoever, and uh, you, you should also uh, not give them to anyone as a joke, because, um, let's be honest, some of your friends may burn down their house. Next up, friends, we go to Nebraska. Yes, Nebraska, the Garden State. No, wait, that's New Jersey. No. Nebraska, the Beaver State. No, Oregon. Nebraska, sooner... Nope, oh, that's Oklahoma. Buckeye, nope. Nope, that's Ohio. The Show Me State. Nope, that's Missouri. Nebraska, the Corn Husker State. Also known as the Beef State sometimes. Nebraska. Friends, did you know Nebraska had a state... Hall of Fame? I bet you didn't. I bet, well, I mean, if you're from Nebraska, you probably do. But though for those outside of Nebraska, did, did you know they had a Hall of Fame? I bet you didn't. Did you know that Hall of Fame has zero black people in it? I mean, you probably didn't know that, but it being Nebraska, uh, you know, probably not that surprising. But that is about to end, my friends. That's right, because this week... In a 4-3 to three vote, <laughs> the organization's commissioners selected Malcolm X to be the next Nebraskan Hall of Fame inductee, according to a, uh, a statement released by Commission Chairman Ron Hall. Malcolm X used the lessons he learned early in life in his intellectual power, dedication, and perseverance in the fight for freedom and equality for all during the civil rights movement in America. His work and legacy continue to impact the citizens of the world. So Malcolm X was born Malcolm Little in Omaha, Nebraska in 1925. Now why don't you hear about his uh, youth growing up in Omaha? Well, they left the following year due to threats from the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, it's Nebraska, 1925. That's pretty much on par for the course. Um, but now he will be getting a um, he'll be getting a statue there. Now he was first nominated in 2004, but was passed because the commission was made up of all white men. Again, Nebraska, not much of a stretch here. Uh, who instead uh, selected mid 1900 senator who made a name for himself, Senator Kenneth Weary, uh, for a campaign to remove gay men from government posts of the 1940s and the 1950s. Uh, that choice was uh, that was nixed in uh, later meetings in 2004. Uh, he was nominated in 2007, but was again passed over by little known botanist Charles Bessie. Charles Bessie contributed a lot. But now, in a very close vote, Nebraska will now induct its first black Nebraskan Hall of Fame, Malcolm X. Uh, each Nebraskan Hall of Fame member is immortalized with a bronze bust display at the state capitol. So, uh, good job, Nebraska. You just barely did a good thing. We now go to San Francisco for a terrible story uh, where a woman was charged with a crime based off of DNA evidence uh, that was found at the scene of the crime. Now, obviously, uh, if you have, find if you had some sort of evidence that is DNA in nature, you process it, and then you uh, go to a database and see if anything matches. If anything matches, hey, that, then you know what to look for. Um, the thing here is that the DNA that was... The, the, the system that they checked uh, the DNA against was from um, a sexual assault that she submitted uh, her own DNA to to prove that case. Uh, from, a, from a rape kit that police use to collect evidence when there are sexual assaults. And uh, she gave this evidence confidentiality, this DNA sample confidentiality, confidential to the police. They kept it, put it in their database, and uh, then used it uh, again when she said, no, this will not be used for anything else except for this case, LIDAR, 
put it in a database, and they use that to make a connection. Uh, charges were obviously dropped because that is a wild violation of Constitution rights. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's like, wow, that is, I was blown away, blown away that uh, that had done. Um, obviously, uh, they dropped the charges. They are now going through the system to, I guess, I guess they stored everything on the same database. And then they were, uh, since 2015, the police have been, uh, if they collect DNA samples from victims of crimes, they keep that in their database too, apparently. So, you know, that, that's some really ethical and legal questions there that I certainly do not agree with whatsoever. Listen, I think we all know I lean a bit to the left, uh, but even that, I can't imagine anyone being okay with that. Like, if you don't want there to be a registration for guns, you probably don't want a database of your DNA either. Just saying. Uh, anyways, uh, charges were dropped, and they have passed a law, uh, the bill, uh, 1228 would ban law enforcement from using DNA gathered as part of a sexual assault and rape examination kits against their victims. Uh, it was passed, hasn't been signed yet, so it'll be officially against the law pretty soon, um, but not quite yet, so I can't, like, I can't believe who thought that was a good idea. I mean, like, really doesn't really want be a whole, you would not be a whole lot eager to give samples if thinks if you think someone would use that against you later right right Ugh. San Francisco get your act together moving along we go to uh, school student loan forgiveness 22 Republican governors including known giant piles of heaping burning soiled baby diaper, Governors Ron DeSantis from Florida and Greg Abbott from Texas sent a letter to Joe Biden demanding he cancel his plan to cancel some school debt. About $600 billion worth of school debt. Uh, wasn't the stop it. According to the letter, uh, college may not be the right decision for every American, but for the students who took out loans, it was their decision. Able adults and willing borrowers who knowingly agreed to the terms of the loan and consented to taking on the debt in exchange for taking classes. The high-cost degree is not the key to unlocking the American dream. Hard work and personal responsibility is. You know, these two guys are so full of excrement. I don't know what I can say on the radio, but they are so completely full of that stuff. They are hacks. They are frauds. Ron DeSantis committed human trafficking this weekend by sending people to Martha's Vineyard where, like, yeah, look at them, Martha's Vineyard. Look at them. They, they're kicking them out. Well, no, they fed them, and then they found them resources. They, they actually did, a, they did the thing that, that you, you, you said you should be doing, but you didn't. You, you shipped your problems off to someone else. And, uh, you know, I don't understand. I do not understand personally what the deal is with folks and student debt. I have no student debt, okay? I, um, well, I do, but no, I, my parents were able to figure this out in the late 90s to make sure that I was able to go to college, get a degree, and not have any debt. I mean, I don't use that degree anymore, but that's fine. I'm okay with people getting their debt not all of it. I mean, obviously, not, a lot of people have more than $10,000 worth of debt. Getting away that little chunk and making it a little bit easier for them. You know, folks, listen. You know, people who have to pay $10,000 less in their school loans will have a smaller payment every month. Where do you think that money is going? Where do you think people are going to be using that money for? Are they going to put it under their beds? No, they're going to they're going to spend it. They're going to spend it on things. They're probably going to get an air conditioner fixed, which they will have to go and hire a tradesman who do, who who didn't go to college to fix it so he can get paid. This money that's not being going to banks to pay for stuff is going to go 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 back into the economy. You 
dumb, slack-jawed yokels. I just do not understand with this. And here's the thing. It's like, well, I paid off all of my debts. Why? And I... Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, sure. When you paid off your debt in the 80s and 90s, things were different. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The du it, it did cost a hundred, several hundred thousand dollars to de get a degree. Why is it more expensive now? I don't know. Complain about that, but the eighties, you could get a degree for two thousand bucks. You can't do that now. What? Why don't you take a look at the income, uh, income increases versus tuition increases over time? Why don't you take a look at the increase of wages versus the increase of CEOs or whatnot over time? And you notice, gosh, well, things really kind of went all out of the whack in the eighties, huh? Boy, gosh, it's so weird. Weird how that happened under Ronald Reagan. Totally weird. So, before you get up on your high horse and want to take a dump all over uh, young people who have massive amounts of debt and making it a little bit easier for them to make ends meet, maybe you should look at how things have changed when you were in college, okay? Things changed. Things have changed, okay? Costs have changed. Things have changed. This is a good thing, okay? People... It's okay to help people, all right? You know, when the polio vaccine came out, people were like, well, listen, I survived polio. I don't think that's very fair to me that I got polio. Why should everyone else miss out the, the experience of the iron lung? Okay? 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 Okay, we're not talking about canceling all student debt, which I would be okay with, because I think secondary education should be more accessible to people as well as non-traditional secondary education, like trade schools and things like that. All of that should be more accessible to people. There shouldn't be just a, a financial barrier to get the education you need to be a productive member of society, okay? Can everyone be a doctor? No, that's just the way that doesn't work. But, you know, there's plenty of others. There's lots and lots of things. We need lots of things. You need lots of teachers you need lots of teachers in Florida. You, they're, they're DeSantis. So, you know, people would like to get the degree. Or wait till the teachers leave and you can say, hey, I went to a classroom once. Boom, you're a teacher in Florida. Really, really valuing, valuing those degrees down there in Florida. But anyways, these uh, Republican governors are making a big show. Big show. You know, some don't have uh, uh, immigrants from other countries to put on a plane and send to Martha's Vineyard to launch their presidential career. Uh, like, here's the thing. Side note, I would, I'm glad I don't live in Florida. I'd be really upset that my governor is spending $12 million to do publicity stunts to launch a presidential career. I would be personal. That seems, seems like a poor use of taxpayers' money. Just saying. But anyways, uh, friends, if you do have student debt, head to your uh, websites. Applications will be there in October. And uh, get yourself a little bit of debt relief. Speaking of relief, I have relief for your ears and your musical needs. Yes, my friends, here at AWSM Radio, we have the one, the only, the DC. He is our in-house DJ, and every Friday night at 9 p.m., he mixes it up, smashes it on the ones, the twos from South Florida. Like, all, like there's only like eight good things from Florida, and DC is one of them. That's Friday night. Well, listen, did you want more nights? Listen, I have, I have pulled a lot of strings. On the end, I talked to management. I got you two more nights, all right? On Saturdays, it's DC House Party Saturdays where DC brings his fee his freestyling DJing to the max. House Party Saturdays gives you all the Miami vibe without actually having to be there. From the top clubs to the bars, DC will bring the party to you. That's Saturdays at 10 p.m. And then it was nice so once. Let's do it twice. Um, DC live in effect again on Sundays at 10 p.m. So... Just to review, take some notes. It's DC Live in Effect, Fridays at 9 p.m. DC House Party Saturdays, Saturdays at 10 p.m. And then DC Live in Effect again, Sundays at 10 p.m. Only here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. We now move on to music news. Uh, Taylor Swift, uh, the singer of Shake It Off, can't shake off a lawsuit in that... Uh, phrase has been used probably three dozen times in various articles. Well, she's being sued on copyright claims. Uh, she tried to get the uh, trial dismissed, I guess. 
Uh, and then it was actually originally dismissed in 2019. Um, however, the, um, the uh, Hall and Butler, who uh, are suing Taylor Swift for this, uh, for this, these phrases used in her song, um, want, uh, appealed, and a three-panel judge said that, uh, this case should be decided in front of jurors, uh, not judges. So, um, Hall and Butler here have written for many different singers, uh, produced songs for Justin Bieber, Lionel Richie, Pink, Maroon 5, Luther Vandross, Victoria Beckham, the Backstreet Boys. Uh, they both filed the lawsuit in 2017, uh, was dismissed in 2018, and then 2019 um, was, was, was uh, brought back on appeal. And it looks like it's finally going to trial in 2023. Now, um, they allege that... Uh, Players gone play are allegedly infringed lingu- lyrics are players, players they gonna play, and haters they gonna hate. Uh, Hall and Butler allege that while the phrases may seem like common parlance today, they were completely original and unique in 2001. Uh, Swift and her lawyers say that the players did not invent the phrases that are clearly in the public domain. Uh, they allege in their request uh, for reconsideration, the court failed to properly filter out the public domain phrases before making its decision to let the case proceed to trial. So, um, we'll see what happens. Um, This could set a dangerous precedent, however. Uh, Some people are saying that uh, it sort of cheats out public domain and lets plaintiffs sue everyone who writes, sings, or publicly publicly says... Players gonna play and haters gonna hate with rep- repetitive phrasing. So uh, we'll see what happens. I don't. I really don't feel like they have a case here. I'm no lawyer, but that seems a little silly that they'll be able to sue Taylor Swift for this. So you know, we'll see. I'll follow it. Come 2023, we'll have a resolution. I mean, more than likely they'll just settle out of court for an undisclosed amount and they'll go away. But I guess. Uh, Taylor Swift lawyers and associates feel like that uh, they have a pretty strong case. Otherwise, they would have settled this uh, probably back in 2017. In other music news, in an increasingly common trend, a famous musician has sold their song catalog. Uh, Chuck D from Public Enemy, one of the most influential rappers and lyricists of hip-hop history, has sold... Uh, some of his song catalog. Reach Music Publishing has acquired a 50% copyright copyright interest together with 100% of the writer's share, including global administration rights of the song catalog by Public Enemy's Chuck D. Uh, He was a founding member of Public Enemy. Chuck D co-wrote nearly all the group's songs, including such classics, Fight the Power... Bring the noise, welcome to the Terror Dome, shut him down, he got game, all of which include are included in this music acquisition. All in all, 300 songs, 300 songs have been bought uh, by uh, Reach Music Publishing. Um, they also include Chuck D's songwriting contributions to Public Enemy albums covering 25 years, from 1987 to 2012, including the group's uh, debut album, Yo, Bum Rush, The Show, including the classic late 80s to 90s run, It Takes a Nation to Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, Fear of the Black Planet, Apocalypse 91, The Enemy Strikes Back. Uh, so, um, according to uh, Chuck D., he said that Reach founder president Mike Kloster and everyone at Reach has been handling my song catalog for well over 20 years, and doing this deal was the right timing for a forward and logical evolution of our business together in an ever-changing industry. Reach has always been ahead of the curve on establishing respect for the hip-hop genre songwriting and publishing-wise, and they will continue to take care of my works. Uh, from the president, Mike Kloster, he said in a press release uh, that I'm so grateful for Chuck, for our business together as his music publisher throughout these many decades. 
The team at Reach will continue to work hard to protect these works while also introducing them to new generations to come. So, uh, obviously, these folks have a long-standing business relationship. Um, you know, Bob Dylan, all these other people have been selling their music rights and stuff for a load of cash to these publishing companies, and this looks like this is the way things are going. Uh, some, some, some people are selling their song catalogs over to all companies. Uh, folks like Taylor Swift are re-recording their songs to get more control over their songs. So, um, you know, different strokes for different blokes, but, uh... Uh, glad to see that uh, he's getting, um, you know, getting a payday for all the amazing work he's done over decades and decades of, of work. In other news, in Washington, D.C., a portrait of the late Representative Elijah Cummings was uh, revealed or unveiled at the Capitol building. And it was a very, very nice portrait of the late uh, Representative uh, who died in October of 2019 at 68 uh, where he was serving as chairman of the Oversight and Reform Committee at the time of his death. Uh, it was painted by Baltimore-based artist Ger- Gerald Gibbs, uh, f- and it will hang in the Rayburn House Office Building's Oversight and Reform Committee's hearing room, so where he held many of his uh, many of the, many of his uh, hearings there. Uh, first elected to the House in 1996. Like I said, he died in October 2019. Um, born in 1951 in Baltimore. Uh, graduated from the Howard University. Received a law degree from the University of Maryland. Served in Congress. And the Maryland Democrat spent 13 years in the Maryland State House of Delegates. Um, was a uh, big, big force in the House of Representatives. Had a very big old booming voice. Was a very smart a very effective lawmaker. Um, according to uh, Nancy Pelosi, who said on Wednesday, he was my Baltimore brother. He was so astute, so smart, so wise, so strategic, and the rest. And that's why he made um, such a big difference. He was a leader of towering integrity. Everyone knows that. A man whose life embodied the American dream. Uh, called him the North Star of the House of Representatives. So... Um, it's a very nice portrait, and, uh, I don't know if you'll be getting a tour of that room. If you do, you will see his portrait hanging up there, hopefully for many decades to come. Folks, my friends, listen, we've been talking news, we've been talking music, but this is a radio station, and when you drive home Monday through Friday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., tune in here for the Rock Sessions. It is our drive time show, and we will make your, a more, your evening commute home fun. Featuring the hottest music on the charts and some other surprises in between, uh, my pal, the beautiful, fantastic Rocks, will make it rock, rock style. So tune in to AWSM Radio Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. to listen to the Rock Sessions on your drive home, only here on AWSM Radio. Next up, my friends, we go to Patagonia. No, not the part of South America below Brazil that is occupied by Argentina and Chile. A little geography uh, geography trivia there for you. Uh, the clothing company, Patagonia. Um, they, the owner, the owner, his spouse, and two adult children are giving away the ownership of their company to fight climate change. Yes, that's right. They are giving away their company's non-voting stock, nearly close to $3 billion, to be owned by a collective that will use all of its profits that aren't reinvested in the business to fight climate change. The company expects that it will generate $100 million a year to fight climate change, depending on the health of the business. Uh, It was founded by Yvonne uh, Coignard, uh, 50 years ago, and like I said, he's done dedicate all the profits of his company and projects to protect wildland and biodiversity and fight climate crisis. Um, so it's a privately owned company, and this is what he wanted to do. Um, and in a letter he uh, published this week, he said, uh, while we're doing our best to address the environmental crisis, it's not enough. We need to find a way to put more money into fighting the crisis while keeping the company's value intact. One option would sell Patagonia and donate all the money, but we couldn't be sure a new owner would maintain our values or keep our team of people around the world employed. Uh, another way would be taking the company public. 
Uh, what a disaster that would have been. Even public companies with good intentions are under too much pressure to create a short-term gain at the expense of long-term vitality and responsibility. Truth be told, there were no good options, so we created our own. So, uh, the owner here is uh, going, the private, uh, the privately held company stock will now be owned by a climate-focused trust and group of nonprofit organizations called the Patagonia Purpose Trust and the Hold Fast Collective. Um, that said, uh, noting that every dollar bill not reinvested back into Patagonia will be distributed as dividends to protect the planet. So, you know, he there were a few ways you could do this. He could have sold the company and used all that money to fight climate change, but he didn't want the people that have worked for him and his team to be fired or reduced or, you know, changed around. Uh, he could have sold the company and took it public, but there would be a board of directors and, you know, they're more concerned about shareholders than, you know, the government. So this is what he did. It is a pretty... Um, Pretty amazing thing that he did there. I would say a lot of folks would not would not do that. Um, the Holdfast Collective owns all the non-voting stock of Patagonia, which is about 98%. Uh, the trust will get all the voting block, which is 2% at all, and we usually create more permanent legal structure to enshrine Patagonia's purpose and values it will be overseen by members of the family and close advisors. So, you know, I'm not going to get into how stocks work with companies or whatnot, but, you know, there's voting stock and non-voting stock. So, um, like I said, they expect to generate $100 million. The company sells new and used outdoor apparel, gear for outdoor activities like camping, fishing, and climbing, and food and beverages made from sustainable sources. Now, Patagonia, which you may or may not know, uh, is a certified B Corp and California Benefit Corporation. Uh, Patagonia uh, was already donating 1% of its sales each year to grassroots activists and is going to keep doing that. Fewer than 6,000 companies around the world are certified as B Corp businesses. They have to meet strict environmental, social, and governance standards and benchmarks set by B Labs to gain that certification. Uh, but so, amazing, amazing. $100 million a year from this family to fight climate change and help the climate uh, by donating all of their stock into a trust that will get the, the dividends from the company. Amazing. Now, from amazing to, ugh, really? A made-for-TV movie about Johnny Depp and Amanda Heard is rushing to production. Um, and uh, that it, it, it's coming. In fact, it's coming at the end of the month. Uh, going to be debuting on September 30th on Fox's Tubi channel, which is, uh, I guess, um, their online shows or whatnot. Uh, it's uh, distributed free on Tubi. It's going to be Hot Take. The Depp Heard Trial stars Mark Hapla from Parallels and Days of Our Lives as Depp, Megan Davis from Alone in the Dark as Heard, uh, Melissa Marty from Station 19 will join um, as Giant Depp's lawyer Camila Vasquez, and Mary Caring from Law and Order True Crime will portray Heard lawyer Elaine Bedehoft. So, fun. So much fun. <clears throat> Hot take follows the the. This is from their press release. The tremendous the ter, the tumultuous relationship in and out of court of Depp and Heard, dramatizing the two month defamation trial that concluded June first, with the jury finding Heard had defamed Depp by alluding to domestic violence allegations against him in December twenty eighteen op ed piece. The jury also held Depp liable for a defamatory statement made about Heard by his lawyer. Hot take comes from Fox Entertainment's Mara Vista Entertainment, and the film was written by Guy Nukaluki, The Daily Show, and directed by Sarah Lohman, Secrets in the Woods. <sighs> Boy. Boy. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's not about can you do something? Sometimes it's about should you do something? Is this something you should really do? Make like it, it like like June first. That was 
that was, you know, three, four, four months ago? No, five? Well, June's the fifth month. Four months ago. That was four and a half months ago, and they have a movie out in five months. I'm sure it will be, huh, interesting uh, reviews from online to be review daily. <laughs> will I watch it? No. No, I will not. We now go to Incheon International Airport in South Korea, where a very solemn ceremony was held between the governments of South Korea and China uh, at this airport. Um, the remains of nine Chinese soldiers were returned to China uh, from South Korea, who died in the Korean War over 70 years ago. Even though the war, well, technically, the war is still technically a war. It had only stopped because of an armistice. Uh, but they do still come across remains, uh, even decades later. And once they have identified them, um, they try to get them back home to uh, their country of origin. And uh, these nine uh, soldiers uh, from China were uh, handed over in a uh, sort of respectful ceremony uh, to officials and military soldiers from uh, China. Uh, according to the Chinese Vice Minister of Veteran Affairs, Chang Zhengao, during Friday's handover, repatriating the remains of the volunteer patriotic martyrs by both sides is an important symbol of the new development of China-Korean relations, and furthermore, it is significant in developing mature and healthy bilateral relations. South Korea Vice Foreign Minister uh, Lee Do uh, Hoon said that the repatriation was a symbol of friendly cooperation. Now, for those who aren't uh, keen on history, uh, China was part of the Korean War, uh, where in the fall 1950, as United Nation uh, forces were pushing North Korea back towards the Chinese border, uh, a quarter of a million Chinese troops invaded from the north, pushing the United Nations back down the peninsula, uh, actually back in past uh, Seoul, the capital, before uh, they pushed back and had that line of uh, the DMZ zone, so to speak. Uh, more than 180,000 Chinese troops died in the Korean War, uh, or what Beijing calls the war to resist U.S. aggression in A Korea. And uh, today, uh, a number of them have finally went back home to China for their final resting place. My friends, if you want to know about all things basketball, then you need to tune in on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. to To the Rack with Mac. It's your go-to spot for all things basketball, and you'll be joined by NBA expert Mac Daddy as he brings you a full hour of high-flying hoops expertise. And then after that show, it's What's Going On. What's Going On is our Fox Sports affiliate show, Providing listeners with over 150 combined years of sports knowledge. Hosted by Nate Brown and his crew, uh, they have been a staple of Western New York sport, sports for the past two decades. And now, they're national. And now, we also have them here Wednesdays at 10 p.m. So, for all of your sports needs, on Hump Day, on Wednesday, it's 9 p.m. with To the Rack with Mac. 10 p.m. with What's Going On. Only here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. And finally this week, star Harrison Ford uh, reunited with his co-star from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, uh, K.A. Hugh Kwan, who also played Data from Goonies, played Short Round in the 1984 movie. Uh, they took a picture together and uh, were all smiles. Uh, that kid's now 51. Uh, all smiles at an event. A very nice photo between those two decades after starring on screen together. And the fifth Indiana Jones is out next year, apparently. Apparently, it's going to be a lot better than the last one. So, hopefully, it's a good Ann Jones. Well, my friends, that just about wraps up this week with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor. Thank you for joining me here today. Remember, you can find me on the on the Twitter at Colt S. Taylor, uh, the podcast version of this show at uh, anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. Also on twitch.tv at Colt S. Taylor. And uh, Cameo at, of course, Cordis Taylor. Uh, I also do a weekly online D&D game if you want to see the fantasy version of me. There really isn't that much of a difference, just uh, more swords and dragons. 
Well, my friends, until next time, I am, of course, the one, the only, your friend, Colt Sebastian Taylor, and I'll see you later. Have a delightful weekend.